All right, so let's talk a little bit more about demand. And there's two ways we can look at demand. The first way is the change in the quantity demanded. And that's an important difference to make sure you follow. There is a quantity demanded for all products. And that quantity demanded is in relationship to the price. So for example, in the price of pork, we had $4.50 from last week. We wanted 6.11 pounds based on how we had to deal with fish. At $2, we would buy 15 pounds of pork because it got cheaper. Again, fish was part of this equation. But this is an example of the change in the quantity demanded. The quantity demanded is based on changes in price, which is the relationship between price and quantity. And that is one area of demand. Now, the second is a change in demand itself. This is a change in the complete relationship of the demand curve, not just between price and quantity, but a whole new relationship. And price and quantity are, again, the variables of demand, but you've got two ways you look at it again. Change in quantity demanded or a change in the demand itself. And both of these are relationships, but I'm really focusing on the second one. It's the relationship between the factors of demand. So what are those factors? Again, your notes for the week outline this in more detail, but things like taste and preferences, things that we want, things that we decide we want over something else. Um, it also deals with the amount of money that we have. In fact, the last week, really, it was about that uh, budget line, and so that's the, that's the idea about money. The other products that we buy, those are factors of demand. So things like technology and research and what else, what's trendy, how much money I have for the month, maybe some things take more of my money like taxes, and so I'm going to have less money to spend on demand. Those are the basic factors of demand, and if those factors change, you can get a whole new demand curve that can alter the shape of the demand curve and the slope of the demand curve. And again, slope is what builds relationship. So this relationship can be the change in the quantity demanded or change in demand itself, two different distinct alter alterations of demand. All right, so let's look at change in demand and how we can illustrate it. So if you put on a graph, you've got a price and you've got a quantity, and that's the relationship between demand and negatively sloping curve. And let's say that's demand zero. So that's our base. Now, let's say that something new comes along, like new research that, that shows that pork is much better for you than, let's say, fish to be a direct relationship. So if you have research that comes out and that really is going to change taste and preferences, you may get an entire shift of demand. That would be an increase in demand. It shifts over to the right. Now, how do we know that's an increase? Well, I'll take my word for it. But if you had a certain price, people at the original demand would buy a certain amount. But if people buy a lot more and you haven't changed the relationship in price and quantity, you just got a whole new demand, that is an increase in demand. Now, the change in quantity is what shows us that. Now, that may not be the exact result that always happens. Maybe something negative comes out, and we find out that this is not true. We find out that actually pork has got a scare. In fact, there was some import of pork products um, that, that came about a few years ago where where pork products were looked at to be bad, like there's a problem, there's a health concern, that's going to pull demand back, like D negative one. That's going to pull it further back away from where it was. That is a decrease, and you can see the decrease because at that same price, we're buying a whole lot less quantity. And so these are examples of a change in demand, and that does change quantity, but a change in quantity demand is just the typical high price, low price thing. All right, when we talk about the demand, there are two really types of demand. We've talked about how you can talk about changing demand, quantity or demand itself. But now let's talk about the types of demand that exist. So again, between price and quantity, these things go up and go down and they cause a change in demand. And so if you had a demand curve that had a relationship like this, very straight up and down, or you had a demand curve that in a market was almost flat. So it's definitely easy to see these are two different types of demands. Now, they both have a negative relationship or negative slope. And so that means that they both have 
um, a negative relationship, but the relationship, because the lines aren't sh- are sloped the same, the relationship is different, and that is the focus. Probably easier just to show you. What happens if you have a price, like kind of low, and the price gets pushed up? Well, quantity one on this first line will show quantity two to be very, very little as far as lower. I mean, you could have like, let's say that's a 20% increase in price. So huge increase, only 2% pullback. So if you have a product like that, that's that's one way for you to look at price. What if you take that same price move, and I kind of missed, my demand curve would be way out there. So the quantity's there. Or you bump up the price, you're going to get a quantity way less. So when you change the price of that second line, 20%, you lose like 40% or more in product. So you can see these two relationships show the same price change, but very different resulting quantity demanded. And those are two different relationships when you talk about the slope of a line. So the first one is called inelastic demand. The second one is called elastic demand. So the idea to remember this is with any elastic, you really have a very small change from price to quantity relationship. Elastic, you have a large change. If you change price just a little bit, huge impact. Now I'm starting with price because that's usually the factor that businesses are trying to change when it comes to demand. They want consumers to be willing to pay more, but when they do that, they know they're gonna get a resulting change. So we can illustrate this with really more math in this case. We've already got a visual illustration, but it's the change in quantity over the change in price. If it's less than one, that's inelastic. If you've got a percent change in quantity over price, it's more than one, that is elastic, and that's the large change. So in fact, this kind of brings us to to look at how we would illustrate um, demand. We've talked before in the very beginning of the class about illustrating our values in a graphical way or a mathematical way. And this may be a great example. In fact, um, maybe I should back up a little bit, move back to the top here. We were talking about a graphical illustration up here where we just give a visual of here's the differences in these lines. But in this particular area, we want to talk about elasticity of demand in a formula like mathematically, like we need to know what the value is. So this ED stands for elasticity of demand, and that's going to be relating to how much it changes. So elasticity of demand is equal to some way we can look at the percent change in quantity divided by the price. And that's going to be this percent change in quantity versus how much did the price change by. And that's how we measure what's called elasticity of demand, which remember is a change in the quantity demanded. Oh, my notes here. All right, so let's take a look probably at a little bit more detail of the formula. In fact, uh, let's see here. Let me give myself a little more room. We're out of room in this spot here. So elasticity of demand and is the percent change in quantity over the percent change in price. So let's spell out how would you calculate these values. So some more room. All right, elasticity of demand, remember, I like to remind us it's a percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price. And what's that equal to? Well, if you take quantity two minus quantity one, that's how much did it change by. And you divide it by quantity one plus quantity two, and you divide that by two. That gets us to what we call the midpoint value. Same thing on price. P2 minus P1, so the old price minus the the new one, or the, yeah, the change in price, divided by the two prices added together divided by two. And again, this is called the midpoint value because you're looking for the middle of those and how much did it change by. So if you come down there and this value is more than one, then that's going to be elastic. If it's less than one, that is inelastic. And that's how we can know a little bit about the kind of demand we might be dealing with. Now, one thing I should note here is that it's always using the absolute value. Why? Because demand is always a negative value. Remember, there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity. If price is high, quantity is low. If price is low, quantity is high. So there's always a negative value. So we take the absolute value to make sure that doesn't really impact us. It's always negative. 
Let's look at an example using something similar to the homework we did last time. You had the price of $4.50 for pork, and we demanded 6.11 having to factor in fish. If the price drops to $2, remember the new quantity we got was 15. It went way up. Our budget let us buy a lot more, but we buy fish and pork, so we landed on an equilibrium of 15. So if we plug these values into our elasticity of demand concept, we can find out if this is inelastic or elastic product. All right, remember absolute value is what we're going to take. Let's plug in our quantities. So we've got, again, this idea of quantity 2 is 15 minus 6.11, where we started, divided by 15 plus 6.11, and remember, divide that all by 2. Keep the brackets where we can get that done at one time. Now, what about the price? Well, the price was $2 and became four, or 450 became $2. 2 plus 450 divided by 2 gives us that midpoint value. And then we go down and calculate those. So let's see, the 15 minus 6.11 is going to give us a little bit of a number here. Let me calculate that, make sure we have it right. That is going to be, let's see here. Um, oops, wrong, wrong number. There we go. That is going to be the value of... Oops, get it to right on here. There we go. 8.89 is the value change. And the midpoint number there was those two added together divided by two, 10.55. So that is the percent change in quantity calculation. Not quite done yet. Let's do each at the same pace. And so now let's look at the price. So price is going to be the 2.0 divided by 4.5, that's the 2.5, divided by those two added together. So that is going to be 6.5 divided by 2 is 3.25. So on the top portion, we end up with a 0.842, and on the bottom portion, we end up with a 7.69. Now, if we keep going across, that's going to obviously be more than one. So that is elastic, meaning consumers would be sensitive to a price change. Now, percentages is another way we can talk about this. If we go look at the 0.84, then that is going to be a percent change. Uh, in fact, to calculate the value, I should say it's 1.095 and that is going to be elastic type of demand. And I should say slightly elastic, right? It's barely over one. So it's a little bit elastic here. And then again, I like to look at these price and quantity changes. But what is our price incentive here? Our price incentive, because it's elastic, is probably not to raise the price, it's to lower it. In fact, um, if we raise that price, in fact, here's what we looked at. We change the quantity by 84.2%. When we change the price by 76.9%. So if you up the price, you're going to by 76% or 76.9, you're going to drop the quantity by 84%. That's not a good deal for our business. That's a bad idea to do that. So elastic products, the incentive is not to raise the price, it's to lower it. But that's kind of why we look at marketing. We try to figure out ways to change the demand. If I can get new research out there that, that in this case, pork is more valuable, I might can push demand out there and change that relationship. The more people would demand this product, the more they'll buy. And I can even alter that price quantity relationship in hopes that I could actually get consumers to view this as an inelastic demanded product. And if I can raise the price because it's more valuable, then they'll buy even maybe a, just a little bit less. Change it by 20% and they buy 5% less. So the idea is that maybe we can alter demand so that we can affect value. Because inelastic demand, those products, they have a relationship that is still negative, but their relationship is that if you increase the price by an amount of money, the quantity demanded will go down, but not near as much. And so that's one of the advantages of 
inelastic demanded products. Those products, you try to raise the price by, let's say, 20%, quantity is going to go down. But if it only goes down by, let's say, 10%, then as a business, we are making more money. That small change is what we're after, but we don't always get to dictate that. It really depends on the type of demand, the relationship and type that we have for our products. And that's what we wanted to focus on. All right, so let's keep, uh, let's keep going with demand here and let's draw some examples. In fact, um, if we looked at price and we talked about high product prices, it's probably sloped a certain way. Low product prices are sloped another way. And so that kind of leads us to demand really is not straight. We've been kind of making it simple. When you have products that are low in price, their demand is typically inelastic, kind of more straight up and down. When you get products that are really high in price, they tend to be more elastic, meaning people are more sensitive. So types of demand are important to understand. The relationship of price and quantity and the quantity demanded is important to understand. And then it's also important to understand how to even calculate that value to know the kind of product that you market. And then finally, we look at the, the way all products out there in the marketplace. And this idea of demand is not a straight line thing. It's probably got a curve to it. And high price stuff's really sensitive. Low price stuff, a lot less sensitive. And that's where ag products are. All right, hopefully these notes help you with the week. Here is the week on Blackboard. It lays everything out for you. Make sure that you take a look at this. Taking your own notes, following my video, and looking at this handout would be a great way for you to kind of work your way through the week. All right, hopefully this video helps you, though, understand better the concepts of demand. Thanks.